In the annals of scientific discovery, few achievements shine as brightly as Edward Jenner's development of the world's first vaccine. In 1796, Jenner, an English physician, made a groundbreaking observation. He noticed that milkmaids who contracted cowpox, a milder disease related to smallpox, seemed to be immune to the deadly smallpox virus. Intrigued, Jenner conducted an experiment. He inoculated a young boy with cowpox pus. As expected, the boy developed mild cowpox symptoms. However, when later exposed to smallpox, he remained healthy. Jenner's experiment marked a turning point in medicine. His discovery, which he termed vaccination after the Latin word for cow, vaca, paved the way for the prevention of countless infectious diseases. Before Jenner's time, smallpox was a terrifying scourge, leaving behind a trail of disfigurement and death. Jenner's work was met with initial skepticism, but the undeniable success of his vaccine soon silenced his critics. The impact of Jenner's discovery cannot be overstated. Smallpox, once a global killer, has been eradicated from the planet thanks to the widespread adoption of vaccination. Jenner's legacy lives on in every vaccine administered today, a testament to the power of scientific observation and human ingenuity. Vaccines are biological preparations that provide active acquired immunity to a particular disease. They work by mimicking the natural infection process, but without causing illness. Vaccines contain weakened or inactive parts of a particular pathogen, such as a virus or bacteria. These components known as antigens are recognized by the immune system as foreign invaders. When a vaccine is administered, the immune system mounts a response. This response involves the production of antibodies, specialized proteins designed to target and neutralize the specific antigen. Memory cells, another key component of the immune system, are also generated. These cells remember the encounter with the antigen, allowing for a faster and more effective immune response upon subsequent exposure to the actual pathogen. This immunological memory is the cornerstone of vaccine efficacy. It ensures that if a vaccinated individual encounters the actual disease-causing pathogen, their immune system is primed and ready to fight back, preventing or significantly reducing the severity of the illness. Vaccines, therefore, are a crucial tool in the fight against infectious diseases, protecting individuals and contributing to public health. The human immune system is a complex network defending the body against pathogens. It comprises innate and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is the body's first line of defense. Present from birth, it provides immediate protection. It employs physical, chemical, and cellular barriers. Physical barriers include skin and mucous membranes. Chemical barriers include saliva, tears, and stomach acid. Cellular components include white blood cells. These cells destroy pathogens through phagocytosis. Innate immunity triggers the adaptive immune response. The adaptive immune system, also known as acquired immunity, mounts a targeted and long-lasting defense. It develops over time, learning to recognize specific pathogens. This process is the basis for immunological memory. B cells and T cells are key players. B cells produce antibodies while T cells kill infected cells. This ensures effective targeting of pathogens. Section 5. Live attenuated vaccines weaken pathogens' powerful protection. Live attenuated vaccines represent a cornerstone of modern vaccination strategies. These vaccines contain a weakened form of the disease-causing virus or bacteria. The pathogen is alive but has been attenuated, meaning its ability to cause disease has been significantly reduced. This attenuation process typically involves growing the pathogen in laboratory conditions that are less favorable for its growth, leading to mutations that reduce its virulence. When a live attenuated vaccine is administered, the weakened pathogen replicates within the body, mimicking a natural infection but without causing illness. This replication triggers a robust immune response, stimulating both humoral and cell-mediated immunity. The immune system mounts a full-fledged attack, generating antibodies and memory cells that provide long-lasting protection against the specific pathogen. Live attenuated vaccines have proven highly effective against a range of diseases including measles, mumps, rubella, chickenpox, and rotavirus. The robust immune response elicited by these vaccines often confers lifelong immunity with a single dose. However, live attenuated vaccines are not without their limitations. They are not suitable for individuals with weakened immune systems, as even the weakened pathogen can potentially cause illness in these individuals. Section 6. 
Inactivated vaccines, safe and effective but sometimes needing boosters. Inactivated vaccines, also known as killed vaccines, represent another important class of vaccines. Unlike live attenuated vaccines which contain weakened but live pathogens, inactivated vaccines contain pathogens that have been completely killed. This inactivation process typically involves heat or chemicals, ensuring that the pathogen can no longer replicate or cause disease. While inactivated vaccines are generally considered very safe, as they cannot cause the disease they are designed to prevent, they often elicit a weaker immune response compared to live attenuated vaccines. This weaker response is because the inactivated pathogen cannot replicate and therefore does not mimic a natural infection as closely. To compensate for this weaker response, inactivated vaccines often require multiple doses, known as booster shots, to achieve and maintain immunity. Booster shots help to remind the immune system of the pathogen and boost the levels of circulating antibodies, providing long-term protection. Inactivated vaccines are used to protect against a variety of diseases including influenza, polio, hepatitis A, and rabies. Section 7. Subunit Vaccines, Precision Targeting for a Focused Immune Response. Subunit vaccines represent a more targeted approach to vaccination, focusing on specific components of a pathogen, known as antigens that are recognized by the immune system. Instead of using the entire pathogen, whether weakened or inactivated, subunit vaccines contain only the essential antigens that trigger a protective immune response. These antigens can be proteins, sugars, or other molecules found on the surface of the pathogen. Subunit vaccines are often produced using recombinant DNA technology, where the gene encoding the target antigen is inserted into a different organism, such as yeast or bacteria, which then produces large quantities of the antigen. The use of specific antigens in subunit vaccines offers several advantages. First, it reduces the risk of side effects, as the vaccine does not contain the entire pathogen, which may contain components that are unnecessary for protection, but can cause unwanted reactions. Second, subunit vaccines can be designed to target specific strains or subtypes of a pathogen, providing more precise immunity. Subunit vaccines are used to protect against diseases such as hepatitis B, pertussis, and human papillomavirus. Section 8. DNA, RNA Vaccines, the Cutting Edge of Vaccine Technology. DNA and RNA vaccines represent a cutting-edge approach to vaccination, harnessing the power of genetic material to trigger an immune response. Instead of using weakened or inactivated pathogens or even specific antigens, DNA and RNA vaccines deliver genetic instructions in the form of DNA or RNA molecules that code for the production of specific pathogen antigens, these genetic instructions are packaged within delivery vehicles such as lipid nanoparticles that protect the DNA or RNA from degradation and facilitate entry into cells. Once inside the cell, the DNA or RNA is transcribed and translated, leading to the production of the encoded antigen. This approach has several advantages. First, DNA and RNA vaccines can be designed and manufactured more rapidly than traditional vaccines, which is particularly important during outbreaks of emerging infectious diseases. Second, DNA and RNA vaccines are highly adaptable, allowing for modifications to target different strains or variants of a pathogen. DNA and RNA vaccines have shown promise in clinical trials against diseases such as Zika virus, influenza, and even cancer, and they played a crucial role in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Section 9. The Enduring Legacy of Vaccines, A Triumph of Public Health The development and widespread adoption of vaccines stand as one of the greatest triumphs of modern medicine and a testament to the power of scientific inquiry and public health initiatives. Vaccines have dramatically reduced the incidence of many infectious diseases, preventing countless deaths and disabilities worldwide. Smallpox, once a global scourge, has been eradicated thanks to the success of vaccination programs. Vaccines have also played a crucial role in controlling the spread of other devastating diseases, such as polio, measles, mumps, rubella, and diphtheria. The World Health Organization estimates that vaccines prevent between 2 and 3 million deaths each year. Despite their remarkable success, vaccines continue to be a target of misinformation and skepticism. It is crucial to rely on credible sources of information such as healthcare professionals and reputable scientific organizations to make informed decisions about vaccination. The enduring legacy of vaccines is a testament to the power of collective action. 
and the importance of investing in scientific research and public health infrastructure to protect and improve human health.